there, I'm Lee Lanier and welcome to my video tutorial on background replacement using Fusion. Before we begin, a little bit about myself. I've been a professional visual effects artist since the 1990s. I am self-taught, so some of my approaches are a little bit unusual. Hopefully though, this will give you some creative ideas. So what are we doing in this tutorial? We're going to take a piece of footage, remove a background building, and replace it with a new sky. This will require an unusual application of motion tracking and rotoscoping. Now I'm assuming you have basic functionality with Fusion. If you do need to learn the basics, I encourage you to go to lowpost.com and check out the Fusion Essential series. If you have experience using the version of Fusion that comes bundled with DaVinci Resolve, you might notice there are a few differences. The way you bring footage into the flow is different, the timeline is in the center of the screen, and also some interface items like buttons and menus are different. That's okay, the same steps will apply, so you can still follow along with this freestanding version. In any case, let's get started. Now I am using the free version of Fusion. This is Fusion 9. You can download this version from blackmagicdesign.com, again for free. Now this doesn't have all the tools that the studio version has, but we don't need those. We're going to use just the basic tools today to make this work. So let's bring in the footage. In the flow view, I'm going to right mouse button click, go to add tool, I.O. Loader. Now there's more than one way to make a tool inside Fusion, but I'm going to use this right mouse button click menu for the most part. So Loader, and there's Loader. The Open File dialog opens, and there are project files that come with this tutorial. These are arranged in a Project Files folder. I've already made myself a favorite shortcut for this, but you can place this folder on your desktop if you want. Inside that folder is a footage folder, and here's a building image sequence. I'll go ahead and click that, and open. Sequence comes in as a single unit. I do need to hook my loader to a view, so with that selected, I'll press the 2 key, and it hooks it up to the right view. I'll click the Fit button to fit it. Now many times I work with a single view inside Fusion, and one trick to hide the other view is to drag this middle bar across and just hide that left view. Let's play it back. Now before I play it back though, I need to check a few things. First, I want to make sure I have the correct duration. This is a 36 frame image sequence, so I'm going to enter 35 there. And I also need to check the frame rate. Now this is different from other programs. If you look at the parameters for loader, there's no frame rate. You have to set that through the project settings. So I'm going to go up to File and go to Preferences. In the Preferences dialog, I'm going to switch to the Frame Format section. And here's the frame rate. This footage was shot at 23.976 frames per second. So I'm going to switch this. Now, because we're using the image sequence, I'm just going to round it off to 24, and that should be fine. And this will be the frame rate that it plays back with. This is where you'd also check the resolution of your project, or the bit depth interpretation of the footage. I'm going to click Save, and now we can play it back. I'll use the playback controls. And the second time it plays back, it'll achieve real time. You can see the real time playback speed down here below my mouse, where it says 24 frames per second. Be careful not to get this mixed up with the preview playback controls at the right. It says it's on a special frame rate. So as long as it says 24 down here, you're good to go. So what are we doing here? Well, we're going to remove the background building just from this ledge going up and add a new sky in that area. So what's tricky about this? Well, the camera's moving in kind of a semicircle. It's a bit bumpy. There's parallax and lens distortion as the buildings move. And also the center building here goes in and out of frame. So a few tricky things. But as I said, we can use motion tracking and rotoscoping to solve our problems. If you want to see how I solved this shot, head over to lowpost.com to see the full tutorial. 